Hey everyone, CyroCore here with another video. Ever since the Steam Deck was announced, I really wanted to play Apex Legends on it. But by the time I got my hands on the Steam Deck, I quickly realized that it's actually very difficult to play this game on such a small device. This of course is a few reasons. For one, the game doesn't really perform that well out of the box. Some tweaking is required before you jump into the game. Another really big disadvantage is of course the screen size. You're gonna go up against PC and console players. The game doesn't distinguish your Steam Deck from a PC, so yeah, there's a challenge there. But probably the biggest challenge the game faces is the right stick of the Steam Deck. It's not that there's anything particularly wrong with it, but it's a bit stubby and stiff compared to some of the sticks you'll find on a DualSense controller or on a Xbox Series X controller. And so compensating for recoil is easy enough, but actually turning left and right simultaneously, which is what you're supposed to do when you're actually shooting at a moving target, is actually much, much more difficult, I find, than it is on a regular controller. But I think I found a way to really overcome this limitation. I've enabled the gyro to act as a right stick, and I think I really hit a sweet spot in how to make it feel just right. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys in this video. First, let's do some tweaking. So I have a series of launch options here that are really important to make the game run as best it can on the Steam Deck. I'll go over what these lines mean in a sec, but I will leave the line in its entirety in the description down below. So all you have to do is to go into desktop mode, copy it from the page down below and paste it into the launch options of the game. The first line that ends in .json basically allows the game to run in DX12 instead of the default DX11. It really helps with frame pacing and stutter, and it also dramatically improves the response time. The game just feels a lot more snappier this way. The exec auto exec function is optional. I play this game at 120 FOV. I'll also link a video down into the description on how to actually make the game run in 120 FOV because by default it can go higher than 110 but you don't necessarily need this line if you don't use it. The dev command will put the game in dev mode. As I understand it, this will allow us to use certain command lines without breaking the game or cheating. No vid basically means that the game will not show you the introduction video every time you start it up, which is quite nice. Here's an important one, plus FPS underscore max 62. This makes it so that the game actually limits its own frame rate. You don't do it using VSync and you also don't do it using Steam's own frame limiter because both of those will add a significant amount of delay in your input. It will make the game feel a lot more sluggish. But why did I sit at the 62? It turns out the game actually uses a double buffer to produce frames to the screen. But if for whatever reason the pacing is off, even if the game thinks it's running at a solid 60 FPS, it might still feel or look like you're getting frame drops. The way to overcome this is by adding two additional frames being rendered. So when the double buffer isn't paced really well, you will always remain above that 60 FPS threshold. It makes the game run a lot smoother. The draw particles and matte disable fancy blending options will simply reduce the amount of particle effects and fancy blending in the game, increasing the performance as a result. Force, no V-Sync will force the V-Sync in the game off. We're still going to double check by turning it off in the game options as well. And last but not least, the full screen command, making sure that every time you run the game, it will run in full screen. Back into the game, let's check our video settings. So I think this is standard fare for the most part. I don't run my brightness higher than 50%, but if you feel so inclined, please do so. The most important thing to turn off is the V-Sync option. It has to be completely disabled. This will make sure that you get the best uh, response time in terms of input delay uh, in the game. You can turn it on and actually see how much more sluggish your controls will feel if you set it to double or triple buffer, for example, but I highly recommend, no, I insist that you turn it off. Another thing for performance sake is to go into the performance settings and actually set the manual GPU clock to 1600, which is the max. Now, why do you do this? This will cost you valuable battery life. 
Well, actually, I've noticed that it doesn't cost that much more battery life, but it will increase performance dramatically. Because look what happens when I turn this off. The game suddenly spikes to in the high 90s in terms of GPU usage. Now, yes, it's running at a lower clock, so it's using less power, but this actually contributes greatly running so high all the time. And mind you, this is only in the shooting range. We're not even in the big battle royale map right now. This can dramatically affect your frame pacing and also add to frame drops. But if I go back and turn it back on, look what happens. It goes into the 50s, 60s and lower 70s at worst. Now, it might still spike into the 80s and 90s during really, really tense fights or really big, big scenes, but for the most part, it will remain at this value, and it's going to dramatically increase the performance as well as significantly improve the input delay of the game. One thing to keep in mind is every time you restart your Steam Deck, even if you have your frame rate limiter set to off, it sometimes will still turn it on to 60. How do I know this? Well, if you have it set to off and your game still indicates 60 FPS, it means that Steam is still uh, lowering the frame rate artificially. The only exception to this is in the game's lobby because recently Respawn has forced the lobby to always be at 60 FPS. I think it's to alleviate GPUs in between matches. But if you're in game and you still see 60 instead of 62, all you have to do is just set it to 60 then go back to off and there you go. It should now be set to 62. This will dramatically improve again your frame pacing and your input delay. So how do we actually overcome the limitation of the right stick to play this game on the Steam Deck? It's by making the gyro function as the right stick as well. The reason this works so well is because now you can decide to only use the right stick for recoil compensation while you use the gyro to look left and right and track your targets. This might take some getting used to at first, but if you're not used to gyro, just think of it as a laser pointer. If you want to point to the upper right, you point your Steam Deck to the upper right. If you want to look lower left, you point it lower left. It's actually quite intuitive, and I think most people will be able to get the hang of it in no time. Look, I can even hit my target relatively well with not using the right stick at all. But I recommend you keep using both. It will get you the best results most of the time. There are a few things you have to consider while setting this up. Let's go into the control settings. I am using advanced look controls. These are my personal preferred controls, but you don't have to use these at all if you don't like them. There are a few things that are really important. Whether it's in advanced mode or in default mode, in order for the gyro to work optimally, I recommend setting your response curve to linear, your dead zone to none, and uh, to set the look sensitivity and ADS sensitivity to five. You might think, well, hold on a second. I really like playing this game with a different response curve. Maybe you want something like classic or steady, or you don't like playing with no dead zone on. Is this layout still for you? Yes. The way to overcome the linearity of the right stick is by going into the Steam settings, and if you're using my layout for the game that you are able to find in the community list for Apex Legends, you'll notice that you're actually not playing with a linear response curve at all, at least not as far as the right stick is concerned. The right joystick is actually set to wide, which roughly translates to the classic response curve. And if you go further down, I actually have a dead zone on the right stick of three right now. So I recommend not tweaking those settings in the game at all because that will also negatively affect the sensitivity and responsiveness of your gyro. You want that to be as responsive and quick as possible. But you can go into these settings and tweak the sensitivity exactly to the point where it feels similar to what you prefer in game. Another few quality of life additions that I've added to the layout of the Steam Deck is that you only have to uh, touch the right trackpad to tag targets and ping them. Your ultimate is actually set by quickly clicking down on the right trackpad. The left trackpad allows you to communicate with your team or to taunt your enemy.
Another cool feature of my layout is that tab strafing is relatively easy. The backside of the Steam Deck buttons, uh, the lower left and the lower right, are jump and crouch respectively. So bunny hopping becomes really easy, as well as tap strafing. All you have to do is just keep your jump button pressed, at least up until you're in midair, while you simultaneously look into the direction that you want to jump, and you can tap strafe and bunny hop. I'm not sure if you can do every uh, form of advanced movement with this layout, um, but definitely the tap strafing has really helped me out quite a few times already in, uh, you know, diverting sniper fire or just uh, jumping around a corner really quickly while I'm trying to get away from an enemy that's about to kill me. So after you've made all these tweaks, you should be good to go. The game should run a lot smoother and you should be able to hold your own much, much better than you would normally do with such a small device. You're not going to turn into the next Shroud or Jen Burton with these settings, but you will be able to play this game very competently with these settings in mind, and you'll definitely be able to join your PC and console playing friends and hold your own in battle. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. If you like what I do, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.